Hey, Pugs. Hopefully you're seeing me today because last week's was on our guest, Maria, who was great. And she's, you know, we really like her, but uh, hopefully the Zoom, uh, you know, magic will go between the between the, the speakers today. If not, have fun seeing whoever is here, but you're going to get a lot of great information. So anyway, today um, I'm first going to say hi to Karen. Karen's here as always. Hi, Colin. How are you doing today? Um, doing okay for Friday the 13th, knock on wood, hopefully. Yeah, so far so good. So far so good, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's noon, so yeah. we only have another 12 hours to go. Um, and then, of course, our guest today is Chris Setlock. Uh, Chris Hi. has been around the group for a little while, and uh, uh, he's a great contributor. And um, I particularly enjoyed when you were trying to get that backsplash, uh, that design on that backsplash. That was really cool. The one with the, the bubbles. Yes, the bubbles. Yeah. Yep. I, yeah. I, I really enjoy it. And it, I think, as I said in that uh, in the in the discussion that followed, that job and that part of the project was already sold. Right. I was putting all that time in for my for my own satisfaction because sure. I, I like to see it right. I want to I want to visualize it, and also I enjoy the tools. You know, yeah. the the time I spend on the tools now, getting it just so. I don't know when and I don't know how, but sometime in the future, it te- it tends to pay off. It, uh, there'll be some. I like to see it unexpected thing where it's like oh yeah glad right. i learned how to do that yeah and it, it's to me it's fun you know i i i don't know if i've said that on this on this uh this broadcast before but um you know some people play Fortnite or call call of duty um, i play 2020 that's my gaming mm-hmm. so you know it's it's uh, you know i spend time doing you know tweaking like you do just trying to get that like there's got to be a way to do this and dug on it i'm gonna figure it out yeah i do that too so tell us, tell us about yourself. What, what do you, you know, what is your, what is your business that you, um, that you use 2020 in? Sure. Well, um, I'm Chris and I'm the proprietor owner and also janitor for Chris Setlock Kitchen and Bath Design. Um, I'm um, located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, which, uh, which is where I'm from. Um, and um, as we were chatting a bit earlier before, before we started the show, I, I, came to the industry in sort of a roundabout way. Uh, my background is in uh, visual arts. I went to art school back in the 80s and um, I worked in uh, custom picture framing for 16, 17 years, I think. And um, in 2008, my wife, who's an academic, got an opportunity to move to Ithaca, New York uh, to work for Cornell University. Oh. And, uh, and at the time um, I had a small business of my own. I was making hand-carved and gilded picture frames for uh, collectors, the museum trade, um, not really doing retail anymore, but working, you know, for, and, um, and, and that's 2008. If uh, anyone else like me is old enough to remember that um, the bottom fell out in the economy and all of these people who had had excess funds to buy what's clearly a very luxury item um, started squandering all that money on mortgages and rent. And so, uh, you know, my business uh, kind of collapsed and um, I needed to find something else to, uh, to pay my own mortgage with. Now, I did have a background and experience in woodworking. So I, I took a job uh, working in a cabinet shop uh, up in Ithaca, uh, Red Barn Cabinet Shop, if anybody's in the, in the area. Great shop, uh, great, uh, great proprietor, and nice community business. But, uh, I worked there for a while um, and then um, I took a job designing at Lowe's and I had no experience as a kitchen and bath designer, but uh, um, but I had been doing design work and sales and such for you know for decades at that point. So the transition wasn't too hard. Um, I know a lot of Lowe's designers kind of get uh, Lowe's and, and Home Depot kind of get flack from from those of us who are independent. But I knew some really really good designers there. Oh. Uh, the fellow that trained me, uh, John Humphrey, who's now at uh, Cuyahoga Lumber in Ithaca, New York. Uh, the guys legendary exceptional truly exceptional designer and, uh, and i learned a tremendous amount from him but, i think um, that's important to know that a lot of the lowe's and hope and depot designers are very skilled so, yes yeah yeah, yeah. it's a, it's it's, to it's easy to take pot shots at them but uh, there's mm-hmm. some really really talented people there and uh, uh like a lot of people i i left there in 2014 um after they made some uh, business decisions that affected my salary. And uh, so um, the next step for me was I uh, started working uh, in a local uh, stone fabricator in Ithaca, 
Uh, I did uh, kitchen design for them. And uh, also because they were a small mom and pop shop and they had just recently started uh, using a CNC machine and a laser templating machine. Uh, I got trained on the LT55, which is the, the laser that, uh, you know, the templators bring in to, to our projects. And so I was trained to do that. I was the backup templator. And um, I'm a big fan of saving time um, because, you know, time is money. And the, the less time I can spend on things that, that don't really require this, the more time and energy I can devote to the things that really matter and the things that pay off. Um, and I don't like surprises. I like lots of information and lots of data. So I started using the LT55 to take job site measurements for my kitchen projects. Um, and it was great. But, um, but you know, it's, it's designed for a specific purpose. It takes very good, very accurate information. But, uh, but you know, it's, it's intended to template for countertops. So I had heard about Magic Plant, which is kind of where, where I think I got the invitation to be on the, on the show. Um, I had heard about Magic Plan when I was still a Lowe's designer. This was in 2013, maybe. I know I was using an iPhone 4 at the time. And, um, you know, so I had heard about it through a Lowe's discussion board that this piece of software on the phone could import into 2020. So I played with it. It was fun. It was neat. And I like gadgets and toys, but it wasn't accurate enough um, to, to be trustworthy. I, at least I felt at the time. So uh, I didn't think too much more about it until... Um, after I left that um, position with the fabricator and I no longer had access to the LT55, which was, a, I think, a $10,000 laser, you know, so I wasn't going to rush out and buy one of those. Um, but uh, I look back into Magic Plan and, of course, you know, as, you know, as the generations of iPhone had uh, changed, the, the software had also changed. And about that time, they had started using uh, VR, virtual reality. Um, in the in the measuring process when it was new you would have to hold your iphone or your ipad up and like sight over the corner of a room and touch the screen and then move over to another corner and touch the screen and you had to stand very still in the very middle of the room it basically being a human camera tripod and um the oh cool nice cat um, <laughs> the newer generations no longer required that. You could walk around the room to think, see things that were behind corners. And it used VR to find the edges of walls and the corners of rooms. So it, uh, it got exponentially more accurate and, uh, and more user-friendly. But also it, um, it, it started using Bluetooth capability. So, oh, <laughs> your background. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, there you go. Perfect. Yep, that's Bluetooth right. capability so that you could use a laser, uh, a laser disto, a laser measuring tape to confirm the measurements that, uh, that are essential. Um, and since it's Bluetooth, those measurements get entered directly in. So <laughs> at, at that point, you know, I, typically for me, if I was using a uh, graph paper, a tape measure and pencil, I might spend an hour and a half measuring out a kitchen. And of course, you know, it's my first meeting with a client. So they're of course chatting, they're chatting me up to get to know who I am. And, and I don't want to give them short shrift. So um, half of my attention is going to them and only half to what I'm doing. And so, you know, I get home and not have all the information I need. So I have to pay a second embarrassing visit or make a phone call. Um, using this software, it is, it's streamlined enough that I can give them my attention and know that I'm still getting the information that I'm going to need later. And then um, when it's all said and done, when I get back to my desk, that data imports directly into 2020. So again, it might have taken me a half hour to, to take those measurements off the graph paper and type it all up and enter it. And maybe if the wall was a little out of square, I'd have to fuss with, with getting just the right wall angle. All of that stuff just goes right into 2020 with you split. Um, and also it's getting easier and easier. When I first started using it, um, I might have to spend 10, 15 minutes because windows and doors didn't import accurately. Maybe in the field, I would say it's a hung window, but 2020 just really seemed to like casement windows. And so uh, no matter what I told it, uh, it would always import as a casement window. So I'd have to go back and change all the windows. And none of those are life and death sorts of things, but you know, I like accuracy. So I put that time into it. Do you feel like it's uh, as accurate as if you hand measured everything? No, more accurate. 
definitely more accurate. accurate. Okay. Yeah. Now, not uh, not straight out of the box. Again, it's um, it's gotten better. Uh, I use um, I use my iPad now. I have an uh, iPad Pro, I think second generation uh, iPad Pro, and it is accurate down easily within the inch, and sometimes it'll be spot on. But critical measurements, I still I still use the laser. Now the laser is accurate to I think a sixteenth of an inch over two hundred feet, um, which uh, which is better than anybody's going to be with a tape measure. Um, so in the iPad Pro, then are you using the measuring program that you can download? Is that what you're talking about? No, Can no, the Magic Pro? Plan software. The Magic so Plan use software. use that with your yeah. I, iPad Pro. Okay. Yeah. So the so Magic Plan uh, lays out the general shape of the room, mm -hmm. reasonably accurately. It also spots um, windows and doors and puts those in to a reasonable degree of accuracy. And then I go back with the laser and the, th the measurements that are critical. Um, then I confirm those because those are the things that I can't afford to get wrong. If um, if the exact spacing of a window off in the distance is off by a quarter of an inch, nobody's going to worry over that. I only put those in for accuracy. When I generate renderings for a customer, I put in you know, all the walls and the ceilings. And um, I might even generate something akin to the room next door to make it more believable. And so, you know, if those aren't hundred percent accurate, nobody's going to know, but, uh, but the placement, the places where we're going to be doing real work, that's, that's gotta be right on. There's, right. there's no room for no margin for error. In that. Yeah. So when, so when you do the gross room layout, it puts in its dimensions, what it thinks its dimensions are. Um, sure. So what do you do? Just, just tap on the one that you're, that you're revising and then, and then use the tape, the laser tape. And e then that, exa exactly. And that so pops it in there instead. Exactly. So I, I uh, find the measurements that are critical. I tap on the dimension that it is uh, estimated. Yep. And then it brings up a little dialogue for me. I can uh, scroll through if I, if I want to do it by hand. We had talked earlier about windows. Uh, anybody that's used a laser, the one downfall to a laser is that a laser has to have a target. It has to have something that it can see. And so measuring outside of casement to outside of casement is a bit of a challenge. Um, or measuring to an outside corner can be a challenge. Um, a trick that I picked up from when I templated countertops is just make a target. Uh, I usually keep a little roll of blue tape in my, uh, in my briefcase. And, uh, and if I'm in a situation where I need to measure to an outside corner that's farther than I can reach with my old fashioned tape measure, I can still use the laser. And, uh, and I just put a piece of blue tape there. That becomes my target. I shoot the laser to that. And, uh, and then it, it just goes directly into, uh, into Magic Plan on my iPad. And then um, tell me what, are we allowed to screen share? Yep, I have screen oh. sharing turned on, feel free. Give me a moment. I have yeah. 2020 open on my other screen. Oh, super. And I can show people the import process. Yeah, so while you're doing that, I'm just gonna, so I think what Karen was alluding to was the newest generation, which I don't believe you have, Chris, is that correct? Of oh, Pro? correct. You're at, asking about the LIDAR. Yeah, so they have the, I'm right, excited about the, that. It has the LIDAR scanner. And that was the, the, what you posted, the, the video that you posted was the, um, the demonstration of the newest uh, version of Magic Plan with the, using the, the LIDAR scanner. And that I think will be a game changer in, in many ways. I think number one, it's going to, it's going to create a, a much more robust marketplace for that sort of app for, for us, for kitchen and bath designers, mm -hmm. because Magic Plan, you know, uh, other companies can, can, you know, do stuff that Magic Plan sort of developed over, over decades. Companies will be able to create apps just based using the LiDAR scanner. And then there's no longer the necessity for all of the, the you know, whatever, however, whatever they developed over the last decade or so, or, or slightly more, I guess they came out in the late 2000, late, late 20, you know, uh, aughts, uh, anyway. So, um, I think that the, the LIDAR scanner will make it so that m there's more app apps out there that can do that, but it, it would be really interesting to see. And, um, uh, just, you know, is, 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 uh, is Santa maybe going to be bringing you a new <laughs> iPad pro? I, uh, I, sus <laughs> I suspect that that's the case. Cause yeah, I, like you, I think the LIDAR is going to be a game changer. Yeah. Um, so, um, so what I, what I'd love to do is, um, you know, do a follow-up if you do have, if you do get an iPad pro in the next couple of months and, 
you know, we can, we, we can do a comparison and see what it was, you know, takes like an, take like an older project and then maybe, or maybe a, take a, a room in your house and measure it using the current iPad pro that you have, and then do the same thing with the LIDAR and see how it differs between the, between the two processes, because um, the, the LIDAR just looks like it's a huge game changer. I mean, I saw it back when they released it back in, I think it was February. Um, I saw a video uh, showing, I can't remember the name of the app, but there was, a, there's an app that came out almost immediately when the LIDAR scanner came out that, um, that took advantage of it. And they, they did a demo of it and it was just, it was amazing. It placed furniture, it placed windows and doors, it placed, yeah. you know, everything. So it, I think it really, you know, a room that has stuff in it, like a kitchen, like if we're doing a remodel, you know, it's a lot harder. You can still do it with the current version without a, without a LiDAR scanner. But I would imagine that the LiDAR scanner will make it even easier when you have stuff in the room. Sure. The one thing that takes a little bit of time in the current generation is if I'm in a situation where I do need to place the existing cabinetry or the existing furniture, um, because those things, the VR sees them, but it doesn't know what they are. Um, the VR, it was itself a game changer, but if you understand what VR is, it's basically the processor in the computer is trying to look at the image and figure out what it's seeing. Right. And, and figuring out, oh, okay, these two lines intersect, so that must be a corner. Right. And, um, and when it gets into things that are complicated, like existing cabinetry with a coffee pot on it and some dirty dishes, there's just too much shape uh, for a, a VR uh, processor to understand what it's seeing. So right. that would never be practical, or at least not in, in probably in our lifetimes. But with LIDAR, all of those data points are already there. It right. doesn't need to think about what it is. It's just interpreting the data returned from all of those little lasers. Right. And, uh, oh. and so it could, oh, it can then place all of the, like you said, the cat the cabinetry, the furniture, what have you. Right. Right. Well, there was a neat, there was a neat follow-up to that video that you posted that um, they took an they took an infrared camera and showed the little dots. So they they like looked. So they turned on the lidar scanner and they had the infrared camera and they were able to see the little points that were generated by the lidar by using the infrared camera. And it just is, is this array of dots that goes over everything, and it's just so slick. I'm sorry, Karen. You wanted to say something? Yeah, I was going to say that, uh, Chris. You're only about three hours from me. So when COVID stops, I got a new iPad Pro with the LiDAR. Oh, did you? I'll, I'll drive down. No. <laughs> and Colin, why don't you come? <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'm only about nine hours away. No. Wouldn't it be fun? Oh, that's, that's nothing. That's nothing. Come on down. Wouldn't it be fun? I would. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take you guys out to Permanis and we'll, we'll have lunch and then we'll play with our, our electronic toys. That would be so cool. We would love playing our with first, it, all the toys. Facebook, our first Facebook Live Live. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I'm sorry, you were going to show us, Go proceed. <laughs> well, so I can't tell, I, I, my computer says that I am uh, screen sharing. Are you guys still seeing you my are. face? We can see, no, we can uh -huh. see your screen. We can see your okay, screen. Okay, you can see my 2020 screen? Yes. Yep. Wonderful. Okay, so so there's a, you know, there's the blank open screen. I, I use the old fashioned layout. Um, and I just go up to the file menu and down to import. And the button that says from Magic Plan Cloud. That we've all ignored for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Now, I just opened up a second window. Can you guys see that second window? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, that window is uh, is in the cloud. Not in 2020's cloud, as it were, but in Magic Plan's cloud. Right. And those are all uh, a long list of floor plans that I've measured using wow. Magic so Plan. Those are pretty complex ones there. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I've... I've uh, just because I'm a nerd, uh, home. There we go. Um, I I play with it like and measure up my own homes. Um, uh, 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 Magic Plan is a little more robust in multi-room arrangements than 2020 is, right? Um, because it's designed for other industries besides just ours. And so, right. you know, I I've measured up uh, all of the rooms of my home and stacked them into floors and, uh, and things like that. Um, and if I import those into 2020, it becomes a great big hot mess. But uh, but this top one up here, um, one click, it asks me where I want the placement zones. And on the inside is almost always what, what we want. 
I click OK and bang. Wow. That's done. Wow. That's done. <laughs> now, like I had mentioned in, in earlier generations, I might have to go go through and uh, select those, um, uh, select the various fenestrations and make sure they're accurate to yeah, it probably what just was actually in flush the doors and, and all that stuff, I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. Now, for what it's worth, 2020 has gotten a lot better on that as well. Um, what was it in version 11, I think, where they put that that big database of doors in the uh, in the room catalog. Yeah, I think it which was 11.12. I think it was 11.12. 11. 12. Yeah. Yeah. So now you can just uh, switch uh, yeah. switch them easily. It used to be a little more time consuming because you would have to select it and replace it. Right. And uh, and that took a little more time. Yes. But but yes. even now, so if it's, it's if it's off on window type couple of clicks now interestingly eight times out of ten probably nine times out of ten i actually use a casement for a double hung window um because we do a lot of a <laughs> lot of six over six and four over four mullion configurations around here mm -hmm. and um the, the i find the best way to do that is to use a split casement with mullions and just get rid of the hardware and uh and it looks very convincing more convincing than their double hung windows they're there, I, I was told, and I'm not going to mention any names in case he watches this. I was told when I was at 2020 last September that um, 2020 Design Live was going to have a database of Anderson windows. So Ooh. I don't know if that was, I don't know if he was just yanking my chain, but he said it in front of a whole room of people. This was, this was last year's, this was when we were able to get together for the, the design council. By the way, folks, Chris, um, congratulations, by the way. Chris is a new member of the, the design council. Uh, the the 2020 you. Design Live Advisory Council, I'll say the full name, uh, as of this year. So congratulations. Um, but that was our, our, our in-person meeting last year. It was the inaugural meeting of the council. Um, we were told that that would actually be in the works. So that will be, so just a, just a quick thing from my background. I, uh, in high school and for a little while after high school, I worked in a lumberyard. I became really, really, enamored with doors and windows and stair parts and, you know, millwork in general. Uh, and so cabinetry was just kind of a natural progression for me, but um, you know, I just, I'm, I'm a window geek. I just love, <laughs> I love windows. So um, you know, one of my pet peeves and I apologize if you've done this in the past, but um, is when I see a, a, tw a casement window uh, the default 2020 casement window with the single mullion down the middle and then like five across and they're like <laughs> they're this wide by this high and uh you know i just i'm just i'm like you i like realism so yeah um but anyway so sorry to <laughs> sorry to interrupt you like that but um but yeah no so, you didn't that was wonderful yeah so i use uh i use that for uh for double hungs I, I found that too that some of the uh, some of the 2020 default um, models for for various different architectural things are are, are just a little bit off and, uh, and and you know everybody has to really think back to 2020s origins and you know it was originally just a just a tool to help you sell a, a, a crap ton of cupboards I mean that's really what it was designed for and you know over the past decade or so um, it has probably a little less than that last eight years or so it has been, it has become more, it has become more of a, more of a visual tool, um, you know, with the rendering and then the, the, the latest is, so what version are you currently running? Are you an early adopter? Are you right up there? Yeah, I tend to, uh, I, in fact, I just saw on uh, the pub forum, the pub forum last night that, uh, is it 12.3 that they just released yesterday? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I haven't, I just, I just saw. Um, uh, uh, Carolina Venegas has been around a long time. She posted that that uh, um, she downloaded the latest, or she was asking if anybody downloaded the latest. So I'm definitely going to um, because there were some there were some bugs in tw in twelve point two that were twelve point two point thirteen that that hopefully this will take care of. So uh, I think as soon as we're off this call, I'm I'm going to be doing that. So I'm um, seeing a client this afternoon, and then later today I'll be installing twelve three. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sounds like we're all going to install it yeah. today. <laughs> so it, you, you and I are cut from the same cloth because I'm, I'm an Uber nerd and, you know, I will, I will spend, 
you know, 20 minutes or half an hour on something that, you know, 99% of the populace would say, you're, you're silly for spending that much time on something like that. But uh, it's just, I, I just, I enjoy it. It's, you know, it's fun. And, and then I enjoy teaching other people how to do stuff in 2020. So it just makes me a better teacher by learning, by learning how to do these, these other, these other things. How much time do you save Chris by using um, the program to download into 2020, the drawing? What do you think basically? I would, I would say on, uh, on average, I save an hour and a half to two hours wow. uh, on a given project because I like a, a, a high level of detail. Um, in the in the before times when I used um, you know graph paper and a tape measure, um, I might spend an hour and a half measuring uh, measuring a space, particularly if it was a space with uh, you know if it was a complicated space, um, you know with angles and and things, um, and I can typically measure a space using Magic Plan in ten minutes or less. I think I've done I, I've done simple ones in like two or three minutes. And, uh, and the data is accurate enough that I don't have to fret about it. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, I think most people to most people to see, um, someone come in and, and use this technology, this cutting edge technology, you know, at the outset of the project, it just gives you a lot of credibility, you know, because people will, will, you know, just be that much more comfortable that you are able to, um, you know, cause I, I've had people ask me, I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm still on a tape measure just a regular tape measure. And I've had people ask me, oh, how come you don't use a, a, a laser measure? And, and I explained the reasons that, that you, you mentioned earlier, you know, that it's not as easy when you're doing windows and things like that. But, you know, that makes me want to um, invest in a iPad pro for one, but, <laughs> um, but also, you know, invest in, in magic plan and just take that, take that to the next level, you know, cause that's really what it is, is it's, it's next level. And, you know, if you can assure people that, that you, you know, just walking in with an iPad and a laser tape, then, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's a great, great thing to be able to do. It, yeah, as you said, it certainly, it, it lends a bit of credibility to me that I have a professional tools and a professional work process. Yeah. Um, now that said, I don't want to cast any shade on the, on the guy that has a, oh, of course uh, a satchel under his arm yeah. and, and paper and, you know, the, the like, you know, like I'd said earlier, the guy that trained me, he, he doesn't use these. He doesn't use these tools and, you know, he probably never will. And that's fine. He does. Lots of people do exceptional work. Um, I, I live on both sides of that. I, like I said earlier, I'm a, I'm a woodworker. That's, that's where my passion is. Um, I become a wood geek, you know, and, and, uh, and specifically in woodworking, I'm a hand tools woodworker. So although I have a table saw, you know, I love the uh, occasion to get out the Japanese pole saws, or um, I can also geek out on uh, on how I care for my Stanley, uh, my Stanley smooth plane. Right. You know, um, the the old fashioned things have been around for generations because they work. Yeah, There's nothing isn't that, wrong. With isn't that, that neat? Isn't that neat? It's it's uh, you know we have we we pick where where technology works best for us in our lives, and uh, and it can be in the most unusual of ways. So that's, that's really neat. Um, what other technology do you use um, for high tech stuff? Like besides magic plan and a, and a laser tape? What well, else um, find help more you? recently, uh, I think like a lot of us, well, like we're using right now, uh, mm -hmm. Zoom. Zoom has become uh, critical in my, in my work process. And I've become much more comfortable with that. Um, and so, you know, I talked a little bit about my journey um, I had a, a, just some serendipity. My family and I, we moved from one part of Pittsburgh where we live to another part of Pittsburgh last December. And now, you know, I'm an independent, a, a solo guy, and I, I generally work out of my home. And I've always felt this pull because I've worked in showrooms before. In fact, my last job in, in Ithaca, New York, I designed the showroom. And I'm so proud of it. So there's this pull to, I need to get a showroom. I, 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 the, the next step for me is having a showroom. We moved. There's this lovely space um, about a block and a half from my house that was really? vacant. It has solar panels. It's right on a major thoroughfare. I was this close to uh, to, to sign in a lease on that, and then wow. COVID came. Wow! And I am so glad I 
as much as nice as it is, I'm so glad that I dodged that bullet because that would have been an albatross. Um, Definitely. And uh, and so you know that gets me to to Zoom. Um, I am in my basement. You know, as you can see, I have a lovely kitchen that I designed for a client in Manhattan. Behind me right now, of course, that's not where I am. Um, I am uh, I'm, I'm in my basement, and uh, and that's that's working just fine for me. Um, I, I do uh, visit clients in person to take measurements and uh, and things like that. Um, I'm going to be doing that this afternoon, but uh, but follow up meetings I have on Zoom, and I found that that works really well. Now that I have a certain comfort level with the technology, um, I, I, I used to um, again working out of my home. I would typically take my laptop with me to the client's house and do the presentation in in their kitchen on the kitchen table. And there's certainly a kind of cachet to that. You know, we're in your home, and we can walk over and point to the thing we're going to change and and stuff like that. But uh, but it's also been helpful that uh, you know even though we're uh, on different computers, they're on their own computer in their own house. And I can throw things up on the screen, lickety split. Right. Um, you know, I can show them the different renderings. And uh, if, if they have a question that, uh, that the, the rendering isn't detailed enough to answer, I can share the, uh, uh, I can share the plan of view. We can go into the elevations. Uh, if I need to pull something off the internet and show that to them, um, that all works pretty, pretty darn smoothly. And uh, yeah, yeah. It's, I think, uh, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, Karen. Well, I think that what I found is because I'm doing Zoom meetings with my clients that I have now too. Mm -hmm. And I really almost feel as if they're sitting right next to me in a showroom. Yeah. And I was amazed that it was that effective. But like you said, we're able to go to the websites, we can pull everything up, we can discuss things, we can show them, you know, share our screen, we can show all the plans. It's, it's absolutely worked out fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not wearing masks. Yeah, that's you know, I, true. <laughs> that's, you know, I mean, you're getting, you're getting full facial expressions, you know, you're getting, you know, I mean, I find with a mask, you can tell if somebody's smiling, you can tell if somebody's scowling, but you really, you know, because of the eyes and the face, other facial features, but, you know, there's nothing like being face to face and, you know, quite honestly, who knows how long it's going to be before we can be face to face yeah. with somebody. So it really makes it makes it sort of the best of all worlds because you're face to face virtually, but you're also able to share your screen. So they're seeing you in a little, in a little box off to the side and they're seeing what you're sharing, uh, you know, kind of the same way, you know, in my showroom experience, I've had two monitors I've had, you know, and I would, I would replicate what's on the two monitors so that one monitor would face the client, one monitor would face me, but still I'm like looking around the monitor to, to have the conversations and, you know, it's, it's not totally ideal, but you know, on Zoom, it's it's just all right there, and uh, you know, it's uh, and and there's no travel time for anybody. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, occasionally, I'll I'll hit a, a traffic jam in the kitchen. You know, on yeah. the way through. Uh, maybe there's <laughs> well, a the pile dog up gets in the, the way. You know, I mean, <laughs> pile up at the coffee maker. Or, yeah. Yeah. Happens here sometimes. And I'm I'm lucky that my kids. I have kids, but my kids were older, so you know, this would uh, this would be a much much harder scenario if I if I still had toddlers or. Sure. You know, grade school kids. Definitely. So. Yeah. Yeah. Neat. And, um, yeah, it, you know, I think our, for us, our, our, our real joy, at least for me, our joy is in the design end of it. I like, I like to make beautiful things and I like to make people's lives better in, in, with what I do, but I, I can't ever get around the fact that I have to be a salesman. I can design kitchens all day, but if I, if I don't sell kitchens, I don't pay my mortgage and I can't do this anymore. So right. um, I, I, as much as that part is work for me, I have to think about salesmanship and masks, as you had mentioned, Colin, you know, I, I have a bit of a gravelly rough kind of voice and, and sometimes, you know, with a mask on, you, like you said, I can't, can't tell if I'm smiling. You can't tell if I'm, if I'm being grumpy or, or if I'm, if I'm just teasing a little bit to lighten the mood and uh, boy, a mask just, that takes one third of my selling tools right off the table. And so um, that's really, going to zoom, being able to do face to face, that matters a lot. Yeah. That's a really good point. As I, was... I think smiles, just uh, us coming in and smiling is so important with customers and with a mask. Yeah. There you go, Colin. We do lose, we lose that whole uh, effect. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. You know, you just can't, you can't show a smile. It just seems very sterile, you know? It's like walking into the hospital. 
Exactly. And, and wanting to run out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm being distracting. I apologize. I just these filters are so much fun. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So it's you know it's a it's a different world. And and what are you finding? So you're both you're both out in PA. What are you finding um, is happening there as far as the surge and as far as uh, you know the mandates for businesses and that sort of thing. It's definitely starting to spin off in things like lead times. Um, yeah. I've heard a number of horror stories, particularly with appliances. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I've been lucky with my, at least with my own cabinet line, um, that uh, that kitchens are shipping in a timely fashion, although um, job completion orders uh, have been delayed, okay. and that that makes sense. Yep. They're prioritizing things that uh, that are going to that what are going to be really sell? awkward. Uh, I sell a line called uh, Holiday Kitchens. Oh, of, okay. uh, Rice Lake with, with Rice Lake, Wisconsin. I've been I've only I've been with them for about a year and a half now. I've been happy with them. Yeah, good. See, I found too the appliances is a nightmare. That I've also had problems sometimes with countertop templating. You know, hmm. getting the date set, getting them to come back. It seems like they're just they must be so busy right now with jobs that sometimes it seems like I'm on a long lead time, yeah, which I, I, it's I gotta wonder, be the economy. Or I the wonder what other COVID. industries are going through this because we have so much demand right now. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So many people are wanting to get started with their projects, but there are certain things that we can't get or that the industry can't get. So it's um, it's sort of a, a hodgepodge of, of different different things. And, you know, I, I had seen a, a comment, I don't remember if it was in our group or, or another group and, and somebody, and I apologize for calling this person, I'm not going to say her name. I don't remember her name anyway. Um, but somebody said, well, that's either, either unacceptable or something about, about the lead time of, about the lead time on the, on the appliances. And I commented on it and I said, well, it would be unacceptable if this were normal times. Uh -huh there's very little to me that's unacceptable right now. And I try and, I try and both set expectations and manage expectations throughout the process because, you know, people have to understand that, you know, you might be without a refrigerator. You might be need to use your, your old refrigerator for three months. You know, don't, don't, don't send it away. Don't give it away. Don't put it in the garage. Mm -hmm. Keep it, yes. you know, because um, I have one situation mm -hmm. right now that we finished a project in the summer, middle of the summer, uh, early July, I think she has no refrigerator still, and she won't have a refrigerator for at least another couple of months. Um, now it's unusual. It's a, it's one of KitchenAid's new white refrigerators. Oh. They're, they're, you know, they have some really nice, nice looking white product. So, and it's, and it's counter depth. So it's this certain set of, but Karen, was it you that was telling me that, that the industry in general is 4 million back orders? Oh, it's only two million. Oh, two million. <laughs> two million in back orders of appliances. Yeah. Yeah, but still, I mean, that's any any amount is is just an amazing amount. But fortunately, you know, if you're if you're in new construction, then that's that's a whole different ball of wax. But if you're in if you're if you're remodeling, then at least in most cases, you have appliances that you can keep and use, mm -hmm. and people can be up and running. But. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's an issue. I have found that clients are understanding about those sorts of things. It doesn't come as a surprise or a shock to anyone. No. Also, I'm in a different sector uh, of the business now since I'm an independent and I have a little more control over who I do and don't work with. Uh, right. I think maybe if I was working for a business where I had to take all comers, maybe you know I would have clients less understanding, less uh, tolerant. But um, you know, I've I, I've I've yet to get yelled at from anybody over the uh, uh, over the difficulties of our current age. Don't you think that changes when you know you had worked at Lowe's before? I've worked in Lowe's. Don't you think that changes when you go out of the home improvement centers? That for some reason, when you're in your own company, that it all that relationship with the client changes. They're really not looking to be difficult with us like they yes. may do in the home centers. Oh, no. without a doubt. Not, not yeah. having to wear a funny vest you know, yeah. or a, a silly hat or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's like wearing a paper hat at McDonald's. You know, when you put that paper hat, everybody's per your perceived intelligence level just diminishes. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, the same thing with a vest. You could be brilliantly intelligent, but it doesn't matter because they aren't going to perceive you that way. Right. And, um, you know, that changed when I went to, uh, to an independent business. And then it changed again when I became my, my, my own boss, you know, both of which, in my opinion, were, were changes for the better. Right. Yeah, I, I saw that too. I've, you've probably heard that too, haven't you, Colin? Yeah. Well, you, you, Chris, you mentioned all comers, and that's you know when you're when you're working for somebody else, and you know you can't cherry pick who you work with. When exactly. you work when you work for yourself, you can, and and you usually do. You find people who are who have similar personalities, and and you know you can you can you can work with, and uh, and that's you know that's that's the good thing about that that aspect of it. You're you're doing less volume but you're also um, able to manage things better and you're, um, you know, you're able to, to, to engineer your, engineer your, your business. Sure. And, and, you know, like you, I, I don't have anybody saying, why is it going to make us money that you spent six hours making the backsplash you just right. right. <laughs> you know, exactly. I, don't, I don't have to explain myself. Right. Right. But that, that stuff does, that stuff does really pay off. A, a really great example is I was, you know, we didn't, we haven't talked about um, SketchUp. And I know you're a big fan of SketchUp and a, a lot of other people uh, chime in from time to time. Um, uh, I jumped on SketchUp as well. Uh, I use SketchUp. I learned SketchUp before I learned 2020 because oh, interesting. It's, yeah. uh, it's very useful for woodworking. And so right. I used it to, uh, to model projects in advance to show clients you know, to, to get their approval before I put a lot of energy yeah. into it. So when uh, when SketchUp models could be in, imported into 2020, um, I, I jumped right on that. And, and in fact, the kitchen that's behind me right now uh, is a kitchen that I did for a client in Manhattan. And that range that you can see over my shoulder there, yep. that is a uh, La Carche, oh, uh, yeah. uh, which, yep. is, which is like 55 and three eighths inches or some yep, yep. bizarre outlandish dimension and of course there is no 2020 model for it yeah never um, will be <laughs> and so um you know i was in competition with at this time i was in ithaca new york um and certainly i think one of the advantages of me was that they could this client from manhattan could pay upstate new york prices for their job in in manhattan um but also you know i was up against other you know, Manhattan designers. And I was the only person that took the extra time to find that range on SketchUp and import it into the renderings. Everyone else made up a, a gray box uh, of approximately right. the size yeah. and put it in the field, which, which of course, let's be real, let's be honest, that would have been sufficient for making sure everything worked. Right. But the wow factor of having that range in the right size, in the right finish, I even figured out what blue it was and made sure it was the correct blue. That's, um, that's in, cool. uh, in my renderings. And so, yeah. Separated at birth, you and I. <laughs> exactly. <yes. laughs> that sounds so familiar, Colin. <laughs> Actually, sounds just funny. like Colin. It, it's funny. I had a, 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 a freelance gig a couple months ago where they were, um, they had a Lacanche uh, range mm -hmm. and it was, um, it was the matte black with the gold trim. And mm -hmm. uh, it was, uh, it was, they had one that was pretty close, but the neat thing about SketchUp is, you know, you can go in and tweak the knobs and tweak the tweak the trim and you know tweak every little thing and then make it look exactly the way that you want it to look, uh, and then before you before you import it. So, yeah, I think that a lot of people um, would you a lot more people would use it if they weren't so afraid of SketchUp, Karen Hockley. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> thanks, thanks, Colin. <laughs> I think everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but seriously, you know, the, it's just it's just not as much of a mystery as people think it is. And not only is it stuff. So once you once you get your head around the basics of SketchUp, you don't even need to know to, how to model something from the ground up, which is useful. Um, it's useful to be able to model something from the ground up. And I just recently in the last three months or so started teaching myself how to do that. I actually I had to. I had a project. Um, for the NKBA in 2020, that I had to I had to have these really funky angled doors. Um, I had to make them in 20. I had to make them in SketchUp and import them into 2020. So, so that was that was fun. But um, you can also, you know, a lot of the manufacturers that if they don't have a 2020 catalog, and they don't necessarily have it in the 3D warehouse, they have 3D oh. shapes of their product available. It's just a matter of finding them. 
Um, so like, for example, I just, just yesterday, I think it was, I downloaded Sub-Zero's entire CAD, 3D CAD package <laughs> of all of their products. And um, it's funky because there's a zip, a zip folder and within a zip folder within a zip folder, it makes it tough. But anyway, um, and I was able to, you know, make these, these ovens for this project that I'm working on look more realistic because so whoever, whoever modeled the Sub-Zero catalogs for 2020 didn't put the right stainless steel texture in. And <laughs> if you're trying to be realistic and you're using Easy Render, which Easy Render renders textures way better than in most cases than, than the, the old Redway engine, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't render very well. It just looks like a dull gray. So I had to go and I, I actually took those those 3D shapes, they were AutoCAD shapes, um, imported them into SketchUp, gave them some, gave, uh, uh, yeah, gave them some textures here and there that, so that they could just become the right textures in 2020. And then you bring it into 2020 and sign the right textures. So it's, and you, I know you found that with the LeConte range, you had to, you had to tweak the textures once you brought it into 2020. And the one thing that, that, I, I hope that 2020 does, and I hope Santiago watches this at some point or someone on his team um, is uh, mapping, uh, vector mapping, or, or uh, I can't think of the exact term, but where we can put labels on stuff, labels and stuff that, that needs to be centered on a specific area, because as of right now, you can't do that. Um, the folks that are doing their modeling for the cloud do, can do that. Yes, I've noticed that. cloud items, cloud items will come in with labels and, and that sort of thing. But uh, we don't have the ability to do that right now. So a lot of stuff that you bring in from SketchUp, if it needs to have a label uh, or something like that, it doesn't, it doesn't look right. So that's something that needs to be, needs to hopefully, you know, that will hopefully be addressed in the, in the near future. I've dealt with that. Um, similarly, I've been I've posted about it, uh, about those issues as it pertains to making um, a, a specialty looking backsplash. Right. You know, that, you the, can, the bubble one that we talked about earlier. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You can, you can spend hours getting the texture just right. But, right. Uh, but if it's something that has to be a specific placement. Um, and I, I, I did notice that in, since the change to, um, since the change to easy render, it does it in, it does the texture placement in two passes. Yep. So it places it once and it does a, 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 a couple of render, uh, passes of rendering and then it shifts and it moves it. So it's, a, it's um, definitely in a different location than Redway. If you do a, mm -hmm. if you do a Redway yeah. and then you do a, an easy render, the, um, the textures are in different locations. So the, wherever it starts it, you know, the, at the, the axis or, you know, the, the origin point or whatever is. Different. Yeah. The X, Y origin. Yeah. yeah. So interesting. We're, we're probably going to start getting really geeky and nerdy. People are going to go, what? Um, <laughs> so we should probably stop there because I'm sure that's already happening. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's so much fun to get, get 2020 to, to do things that, that uh, you wouldn't expect it to do or that it, you know, wasn't designed to do, or, you know, I mean, that's uh, you know, I, I had posted the other day about the uh, custom shapes, um, how people use custom shapes, the top 10 ways to use custom shapes. Yeah, I saw that. And, and um, you know, it's, it's, it allows you to do stuff that, uh, that you wouldn't, you know, that's why they're there. So that you can build stuff in 2020 that, that you don't necessarily have to bring it in from SketchUp or anything like that. You can just do it right there. Um, Although you had a bit of a foible with that one recently. Oh, you saw that. Yeah, that I was, did. Yeah, that was yesterday, the big, big bubbles, the big bubbles mm -hmm. in the middle of the room. Yeah, yeah that was fun. Um, I did. I, I meant to go back, and I'm gonna go back and post. I, all I had to do was all I had to do was was change the dimensions of each of those items by a sixteenth of an inch up down, and then mm, okay. go in and reassign the reassign the textures. I was able to fix all the pieces in about ten minutes, so that wasn't the end of the world. But certainly, you know, it's something that that you know where where 2020, and I'm gonna call them out right here where 2020 has the 2020 design live and they have the configuration and configuration in cloud and they want people to start mig migrating to that. They have to be on point with the cloud. It has to be, it has to be um, bulletproof and it's not yet. So, you know, that's something that, that they really need to work on. Um, 
And, you know, cause I was, I was frustrated. I was, you know, that was the project I'm working on for them and for the NKBA. And I was submitting some, some revised uh, renders and I went in to start rendering it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, I, I spent all this time and now I have to go in and, and do all this. So it, it's, you know, it was a bit of frustration, but it's the, the fix was pretty easy and um, I don't want to be too hard on them because they have, you know, they have a lot on their plate. So. Well, Chris, can I ask you real quick? Do you love doing kitchens? Designing? Yes, I do. Yes, so I you? do. And when I remember when I first took the job, I, I just thought of it as a, as a paycheck, you know, something to, to tide me over until, uh, until the economy got better and I could get back to, to doing the things that, uh, that I love. And, uh, and I found that I love this. Good. I, um, I sometimes miss getting my hands on things. We had, we had chatted a little bit earlier about, you know, I have some back issues. And, uh, and so I can't, uh, I, I can't be the guy swinging the hammer anymore. I, I can't help unload the cabinet truck when, when the truck shows up. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes I miss being able to get my hands dirty. And I still do enough around my own house that uh, I, I still make the occasional mess. But, uh, but, uh, but I do love, yeah, I, I love, I love doing this. Love doing this. Great. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, that in order to become an independent, you kind of have to love doing it. Right. I mean, you wouldn't do oh, it. Sure. You yeah. Put a lot on the line here. For, yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. So, um, one of the things we were talking about 2020 live, and I know there'd been a lot of back and forth about the, the new subscription model. How do you guys feel about subscription models in general? Because that seems to be the way everything we had talked earlier about uh, Magic Plan, you know, that, that I use. That is also now on a subscription model, and SketchUp is now on a subscription model. But. Right. I think that you know, software companies like any other company have to have recurring revenue in order to stay alive. And I think I I, I don't know this to be true, but I, I suspect that 2020 found this out in in the you know early 2010s uh, and you know a lot of companies did because you know if you have a product in general that you just download it stays local and you just use it on your computer you might never need to upgrade it so you buy it once and you know you don't re ever really need to upgrade it um, you know that happened with Microsoft with Office people weren't weren't upgrading it to the newer versions and now now Office is a subscription um, so you know it it, uh, it just changes the, the, the overall face of the software industry. And um, no one company is bad for doing it, I don't believe. And I think that it, it allows them to stay around. You know, if you, if it, I'm sure that, you know, after 2000, after 2008, 2009, you know, a lot of people stopped paying their support. They couldn't afford it. You know, if they were going to stay in business, they had to cut somewhere. And that's, that's one area where, where you cut. And it doesn't matter if it's 2020 or any other software, soft, um, well, soft plan is one, uh, uh, chief architect, whatever. If you can still use the software reasonably without, without paying to upgrade for a period of time, then, you know, if, if you can't afford it, then that, then that is, you know, what you're going to do. But that also puts the software companies at risk. So I think that, uh, you know, it, it keeps everybody current. It keeps everybody with the newest technology and it allows the software companies to stay around and support people, support, support their product, support. Um, you know, I've, I've known a couple of people that have been off support for eight years, nine, nine years, and they'd call 2020 support with an installation issue. They'd walk them through it. You know, it's just yeah. the type of, that's just the type of company that they are. Um, but uh, I think in order to, to stay with the current technology and, you know, they're making it, they're making it so that you're getting a lot of benefit for doing it. You know, you have the configuration in cloud, which does work well when it works. Um, and the, and the easy render, I, I, I think that has so much potential and I can't wait until they turn on the controls because, you know, what we're seeing is just a, just a, the, the boilerplate version of it. And it, controls you have you know texture or or uh, hidden lines mm -hmm. and medium and high and i think that's it and yeah that's yeah, definitely really kind of stripped control down. over yeah yeah it's stripped um, down so you know once they turn on the full version once it comes out of beta 
I think that's going to be a, a game changer for a lot of people. You know, you can you can literally do a rendering that is close to photorealistic in like five minutes once you've completed your design. And that's going to be huge for the folks that are in the home centers or in the, the, the medium-sized, uh, you know, kitchen and bath showrooms that don't necessarily have the time to mess around with uh, the lighting settings and, and that sort of thing now. And they're going to be able to get a reasonable, so it's going to elevate, I think it's going to elevate everything. So I think that once the initial shock is over and the folks that, you know, are out there that have been 20, 20 users for 20 years that have to switch over to the subscription model. I folks that I talk to that have not known 2020 before the subscri subscription model have no problem with it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a cash flow issue. You just, you just figure it into your cash flow. You know, they have, um, they have a uh, uh, PayPal credit that you can use so you can sp split your payments over six months, for no, no interest for cash flow. So I think that uh, I think overall it's, it's going to be a good thing. It's just that we have to get over the hump of, the paradigm shift from, yeah. you know, the, the locally installed. And, and I think that, I think that they would benefit from like a 2020 classic, you know, 2020 design classic, 2020 design live. So that, you know, <laughs> folks could still have a locally installed uh, that don't want to be on the cloud and, and maybe save a few hundred dollars a year. Um, but I don't know that that will ever happen. I think that they're moving away from, away from that totally, but. Yeah. I purchased my, my uh, 2020 in 2002, my key. Yeah. And then in 2018, I went on the subscription because at that point I had been off support for so long, it was going to cost more to update it than the actual subscription. Right. And then Colin helped me out last year. So <laughs> now, I was a cabus, especially had to be at cabus for, but you couldn't be at cabus. So I was probably sick. <laughs> <laughs> you were sick. Yes. Yeah. So happened all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, Chris, thank you so much for coming on. Um, oh, thank you for having me. This is a so lot of much, fun. So much fun learning about you and, and how you use technology in your business. And I'd totally love to do a, a follow-up um, when you get a, an iPad Pro or if you can drive out to Enola and see see Karen <laughs> <laughs> or have Karen drive out to Pittsburgh <laughs> to see you. And, uh, and then I'll join you guys and, you know, we'll all go uh, go for lunch. But, um, but no, thank you very much for being here. Really appreciate it. And um Look forward to to seeing you around the around the Facebook group and and your contributions. Thank you. Thanks again. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. All right. So I'm gonna just stop the feed and then we'll just we'll just finish up. So I'm just going to.